Imagine debugging a Nest.js app with hundreds of interconnected modules. Absolute nightmare, unless you've got a tool that shows you exactly how everything connects. So this isn't just theory because I've tested it on real world Nest.js application. And honestly, I wish I found this sooner because it would have saved me hours. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up and use Spelunker, how it helps you spot hidden mistakes and how to automatically generate visual diagrams for your entire app's architecture. But first, to understand how Spelunker works, you have to understand what a Nest.js app actually is. Every Nest.js app is made of multiple modules and a module can import an other module to use its services. And that creates a tree of module and every Nest.js app always has a root module at the top. And that will be the entry point of your application. So when you have a small application with only a few modules, it's quite easy to remember all of them and know exactly how they are connected. But when you have a large app with dozens of modules and complex relationships between them, it's almost impossible to know exactly how they are connected. And that's exactly the problem that Spelunker solves. To use Spelunker, you first need to install it using your favorite package manager. Then inside your main, your main file, you can call the Spelunker module explore method. When you do that, you can see an entire list of everything that is in your application. You have the list of all the modules and for each modules, you have what they are importing, the providers, the controllers and the exports. This is a great starting point, but if you have a large application, that's still a lot of information to digest. But Spelunker has a graph mode that's very handy. To use the graph mode, here I have created a generate app graph function to create a graph for our application. So what you do is that just like we did before, you can call the explore method with the application instance, and that will give you a tree of your application with the list of all the modules. And then you have a graph function that you can call. So that graph function give you a graph representation of your application. And then you can get all the edges of that graph by calling find graph edges and passing in that root object. Once you have the edges, you can use them to generate a mermaid graph. So here I'm using the mermaid syntax to generate a graph and then I'll just return the graph and we can just console log the graph at least for now. And what you get in your, in your terminal is that you get something that looks like this that represents all the, um, the relationships between all the modules of your application. So what you could do instead is save your output inside a, a file. Then if like me, you have the mermaid VS code extension, you can just preview the diagram of the file you've generated, or you can even see those mermaid diagrams in the browser directly. And you end up with something like this. So this is basically a representation of the app that I'm working with right now. So you can see there is a lot happening here. And now because I have saved it as a file as well, you can even have it inside your source control and keep track of the changes. So here I've picked mermaid because that's what was in the documentation example. And it's a very popular diagram as code tool. But of course you could use any other tool you like. The idea is the same. You generate a graph object and then you generate a visual representation of it. But even like this, you might still struggle to see things clearly because well, there is a lot happening especially when you have global modules, there will be a lot of arrows pointing to that global modules, but there is a way to make it easier to read. And here's how you can do it. So what you can do is pass a ignore import to the explore method as an option. And what I've done here is that I've created a function that gets all the global modules and I have excluded them from the, the tree that I'm going to generate. Now this gives me something easier to read and I can see a little bit clearer what's happening inside my application. But inside the ignore imports array, you can also add regular expressions. So for example, here I have added a regular expression to exclude all the modules ending with config modules because I consider that the configuration stuff is not really important in the architecture. So now I have a diagrams without the configuration modules. And when you filter out what you don't want to use, you can focus on the most important parts of your app. And you can analyze the diagram to see 
if the app structure makes sense. For example, you might wonder why the app module here is importing the notification modules. That could be a mistake. And this is actually a very common mistake because when you create a new module with the CLI, the generated modules is automatically registered as a dependency of the root module, but you might not always want, want that. Here, I know that this is a mistake and I should probably remove that, this um, dependency. But you can also use this visual representation to ask yourself questions like, uh, why does the report module import the metric module, um, and so on. But this high level overview might still not be enough because you might want to know more about a specific part of your application. For example, you might want to know exactly what's happening uh, when you look at the products module in particular. And Spelunker allows you to do that with the debug mode. So let's see how that works. So in order to use the debug mode, you have to call the Spelunker module debug function. So here I have created a dedicated function to generate the module graph. We'll add much more to that later on. But here the idea is that we start from a given module and that would be the entry point of our analysis. So the idea here is that we will start from the product module and we will see what are the dependencies from that, that starting point. For now, let's console log all the dependencies. And if we look in the terminal, so here we will have a list of the product modules and all the modules that the product modules depend on. Again, this might not be the best way to, to analyze what's happening um, inside, your, inside your module. So again, we can just do a visual representation of this array. Now I have refactored my generate module graph function to generate a mermaid diagram. And we are going to save that mermaid diagram inside the product module file. And now that we have our product module, we can generate a mermaid preview. Starting from our product module, we can see all the chain of dependencies. So here there is suppliers module, app config module, etc. But what if you wanted to go even deeper than this? What if you wanted to know exactly what's happening inside the modules? That's exactly what I've done and I'm going to show you how I've done it. So what I've done here is that I've created a new function in my main file, the generate module provider graph. The idea is that instead of focusing on the modules, we are going to create a dependency graph of the providers. That's the controllers and also the providers. So here, uh, what I'm going to do is go through all the dependencies and for all the providers and all the controllers listed for each, um, each module, I will create a link between um, all the dependencies of the providers and the controllers. And then what I'll do as well, is that I'll group all of them inside subgraphs and um, based on their modules. So if a provider and the controller belong to the same module, they will be grouped to together in a subgraph. Feel free to pause and uh, look at the code. I'm going to go quickly on this, but the idea is that instead of doing the dependencies on the modules, I focus on the providers. And then again, I will generate that graph and save it in the products.providers uh, mermaid file this time. With this representation, I can see exactly what's happening inside my products module. I can see that the controllers depend on the product service and so on. And I can also see what are the external dependencies and the external modules that are used inside my products module. Now let's imagine that there was a change inside our products module. And for example, there is now a dependency on the notification modules. Here, because I have a good understanding of what my application structure should look like, I can immediately spot that there is an issue here because nothing inside of the product module depends on anything from the notification module. So I can see that here, this import was probably a mistake because it's not used at all. This is actually a very common mistake that we make as Next.js developers. And there are other very common ones that we make as well. And you can watch this next video to see what they are and how to avoid them.